Many of you are wearing Fitbits to monitor your behavior and to get a hopefully improvement in your health, but you all carry a far more, far more useful monitor, which is your phone. Your phone knows the words that you say and write, that you receive and send, and these words tell a tremendous amount about you. From them, we can tell whether you're male or female with 93% accuracy. We can tell your age within five years, and we can profile your personality and your health behaviors. But the words also know about your interactions with other people, and those are tremendously influential. The people around you affect your mental health and your physical health, and those are highly connected. People who are happy and in good relationships, on average, live five years longer. That's comparable to not smoking, a huge difference. I want to show you two sets of studies. In the first, we'll look at individual level modeling from Facebook to show what we can see about people from their Facebook posts. And the second, I'll show you a set of models from communities looking at US counties to show how the tweets at a county give insight into the mental and physical health of that county. So what do we do? We have 70,000 volunteers who shared all of their Facebook posts. They told us if they were male or female. They told us how old they were. And they took a questionnaire, a personality questionnaire, standard from psychology, to characterize their personality. We then count up their words. And of course, in Facebook and Twitter, everything is a word, an emoticon, a phrase. And correlate the words with age, sex, personality, health, to see what we can learn about them. Now let's start with something that's relatively clear to see if it makes sense. See the words that are most typical, most discriminative, most predictive of being female. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit embarrassing, I'm sorry. Um, but I didn't make this up. It's very cliche, but these are the words. Now, most words are the same between males and females. These are the most extremely female words. And in these sh pictures, I'll show you a bunch of them. The color gives the frequency. So love you and the heart and excited are very frequently with my or baby. And the size gives the correlation strength, the amount of discrimination. right? So big ones like the heart and shopping, uh, yummy and love him really indicate females, but they're not quite as frequent. And you can see the soul, and I miss and proud of. Um, but before you get upset about my clichéness about females, this is what girls look like, what do boys look like, what do men look like? I'm a little embarrassed, but I'd like to point out there are some positive terms in there. <laughs> Engineering, government, it's not just, oh, and some subtle ones. Women talk about boyfriend or husband. Men talk about my wife and my girlfriend, but don't talk as much about someone else's girlfriend. Okay, well, that's pieces. I'm also, while I'm doing male, female, let me show you some other form of uh, response we're going to show, results. I've shown you the same female slide, but sometimes it's easier, because there are lots of female words, to group them into topics. So we've clustered words that tend to show up together, which tend to have similar meanings, into clusters. And you can see that the female words include excitement, cuteness, happy birthday wishes, family. So you can see the topics often give more insight as well as the overall words. And we'll see these several times this morning. Males, you can again see that there are topic and fighting and Xbox playing, but there are also topics on government and, of course, football, the important things in life for males. OK, that's men and women. But our 70,000 volunteers also took a detailed personality questionnaire, the five-factor model. And we can look at the words of different personalities. So let's start with high extroversion. These are controlled for male and female, balanced. What do extroverts look like? Pretty good, actually. On average, they're happier than introverts. Uh, party, great night, love you, weekend, chillin'. That's nice. Contrast that with low extroversion, introversion. It's like my colleagues in computer science were mostly introverts. Ah, <laughs> uh, sigh. 
not quite so happy. Computers and internet, not surprisingly, books and drawing and reading, but also some things that are positive interview features, apparently words of a little more complexity and thinking, carefully thinking about things. Um, not much depression, just a little bit. So that's extroversion, introversion. I want to show you now one more pair, neuroticism. <laughs> Not fun to be a neurotic. You're sick of things. Life is annoying, horrible, angry. My head hates lonely. <sighs> OK. The op, not surprisingly, also to my called psychological colleagues here, psychology colleagues, but let's look at low neurotic people, well-adjusted people. What do well-adjusted Americans talk about? Sports. That was a surprise. Basketball, volleyball, snowboarding, Celtics, Lakers. Well-adjusted, non-neurotic people talk much more and presumably engage in much more sports. They also talk about religion. You can see the Lord and church and blessed and Proverbs, positive correlates of low neurotic people. Well, this is the individual level model about people. But do these personality traits have broader consequences in terms of characterizing whole communities of people? And the communities I'll talk about today are going to be counties, US counties. I'm showing at the top here the exact same slide I showed you of well-adjusted individuals. And I'm showing below word topics, clusters, sets of words that show up in counties that have low suicide rates. Healthy counties talk about sports as well. And that leads to the second half of my talk, which is to note that counties and communities, schools, churches all have personalities too. And those personalities have a huge influence on the people that live inside them. So for the second set of results, we collected a billion tweets. We mapped many of them, hundreds of millions, down to the county level to see where they came from. We correlated that then with data from the Centers for Disease Control and from the US Census Department to say what words from a county best predict or characterize the well-being either the happiness on a scale of one to five, how satisfied are you with life, or mortality, hard data on people dying of heart disease. So let's start with life satisfaction. What words are predictive of a community being on average happier? And at the top, I've got eight clusters, topics, which are positively correlated. At the bottom, two that are negatively correlated. So what counties are happier? Those which have ideas and suggestions, those who do here not so much active sports, but training, personal training, those that have humans experience, customer service, good jobs characterize happier communities. Where does money show up in happiness? One topic right in the top in green, donation. On average, counties that talk more about giving money are happier counties. This is true, by the way, only for the wealthier counties. If you're poor, donation is not as valuable. But if you're wealthier, it is. And this corresponds to individual level results that we know. People have done the following experiment. You all, here's 10 bucks. Go buy yourself a nice present, a little one, and come back in three hours. Here's 10 bucks for you guys. Go buy a friend a present and come back in three hours. Who's happier after three hours? The ones who bought something for their friends. Giving money away is actually often a good path toward happiness. Well, what characterizes counties that are less happy? There are less features there, but being bored, OK. Not so exciting, but we'll see that it's not just happiness that has these effects, but also health. So we grabbed with the same set of quarter billion tweets, the words, and grabbed from the Centers for Disease Control mortality from atherosclerotic heart disease. So how, what fraction of the population in each county died from hardening of the arteries. And looked at the words that are most predictive of people dying. Now this is slightly odd, because the people tweeting are not the ones dying. The people tweeting are in their teens and 20s and 30s. The people dying of heart disease are in their 50s, 60s, 70s, hopefully 80s. But 
Nonetheless, if you live in a community, that community has a personality profile. So what words do show up in high heart disease mortality counties? Not so fun either. It's not just happiness. This is death, life and death. And in ones with low heart disease mortality? Looks nice, a mixture of good jobs and of positive sentiment. We can get a better picture by looking at the topics, these clusters of words, to see which topic clusters most correlate with lower heart disease on the top in green or higher heart disease at the county level below. So what do you want your neighbors to be tweeting about? Overcoming challenges, opportunities and possibilities, Fantastic weekends. What do you not want your neighbors to be tweeting about? Uh, bullshit, hate, drama. The personality of your community affects your longevity, not just your happiness, but your health. Well, how big is this effect? Well, we have a lot of demographics for these different counties, and we know what the normal correlates are, the causes, in fact, of heart disease. Being black is unfortunately positively correlated with heart disease in the US. Being fat, having hypertension, having diabetes is really bad. Smoking is bad. Having low income or education is really bad. All of those combined explain a fair amount of the variance of heart disease. If I use Twitter alone, the blue line at top, Twitter alone gives more predictive power for heart disease than the top 10 demographic and behavioral traits. Twitter captures both socioeconomic status, how rich or poor are you. It also captures, though, the mood and personality, how angry, how positive, how well-adjusted is your community. So the words of your community have a big impact on you. The words that you hear and see around you shape how well you thrive both mentally and physically. So we've looked at two levels here. At the individual level, we can do remarkably good at profiling people. I can tell from your Facebook your personality as accurately as your friends can. I can diagnose whether you're depressed or not as accurately as a two-question screen that we use in the hospital here at the University of Pennsylvania. We can tell a lot there, but we also know a lot not just about what you're tweeting or texting, but also what your friends are doing, what your community is telling there. And communities are tremendously important. Study after study is suggesting that everything is contagious, not just happiness or smoking, but obesity. What's the vector? How are these things transmitted? It's transmitted by words. And those words are, in fact, captured by your phone, not just your text and tweets, but increasingly your spoken words as well. This presents a wonderful opportunity for building monitors based on phones to look at the words people use. We're going now into pregnancy clinics to help pregnant women, with their choice, decide if they want to be monitored for depression, a risk factor in pregnancy. We're going into opioid treatment clinics with people's permission, monitoring to see what triggers, what drives them to either successfully complete treatment or to drop out and relapse. But monitoring words is not just for those who are depressed or addicted. It's something that's important for all of us. We're all influenced tremendously by our friends, our families, our neighbors, our coworkers, and these tools start to offer the possibility that you can have an always-on monitor profiling what you're saying, what you're reading, what you're hearing. The question then, you will have the opportunity and the choice, at least I hope you'll have the choice, as to whether you want to be monitored, what you want to have recorded or not recorded in your conversations and analyzed. What would you like to know about how your words affect your friends and neighbors. What would you like to know about how their words affect you? Thank you.